Hi, my name is Frederick Soroya. I'm in a band called Data Rock. Hi, I'm Jerry Casali, and I'm in a band called Devo. I wish you would burn my motherfucking clothes, motherfucker. <laughs> Certainly not say lovey. I'm throwing the microphone to you, lady. Come and get it. Come and get the microphone. Come and get it. Come and get the microphone. What's up? It's Brittany for De La Vie. I'm in a Devo Data Rock sandwich right now with Frederick and Jerry. You know, Data Rock. It seems to be a common Devo. female fantasy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm living the dream. What can I say? That's the most common sexual fantasy around these days. Well, I mean, in the past, it was always very predictable that a guy always wanted to be with two women. And we even saw pizza commercials with um, orangutans where the male orangutan fantasized about being with two female orangutans. That's how primate that fantasy was. But today, in today's world, when the women said, we can be as filthy and as aggressive and as nasty as any man ever was, they all watch porn with two guys and one girl. I've witnessed this over and over. That's the entrance to the interview, motherfucker. The show was awesome. You directed the video that we were all a part of tonight. How did that come about? Like everything does, Frederick. Frederick's a, he's a mega one-man creative machine that keeps it all alive. He thinks of it all. He, he thinks like a label. He thinks like a marketing company. He thinks like an ad agency. And he thinks like a creative artist on top of all of that. And he has enough energy for five people. So you're just the whole package. How did that, how did that even happen? Um, <laughs> wait a minute, Jerry. Did you forget to put your phone on flight mode? He's talking to Andreas. He's sorry, I missed his first call. That's the producer of the video. He's doing a quick interview with you guys, and he's embarrassed, but it's gonna work out. <laughs> I wanna hear what's going on. <gasps> the cameras are fucked up. The video isn't happening. <laughs> no. They put beta tapes in the VHS recorders. <laughs> that was, I'm sorry, that was the co-director the way this came down, it was impossible. It was a team effort on the international scale of we were dealing with so many moving parts and variables and so many flaky people that were saying yes and meant no. And people that said no and didn't mean yes. And uh, in, the, in the 11th hour, a team came together. And uh, one member of that team is a, a local person here named Andreas Trolf who's really talented, uh, really amazing guy, um, who's a skateboarder and a director in his own right, has a team of great people, acts as a producer sometimes, and is uh, involved in an animated show for Nickelodeon as well. And basically, he and I sifted through all the undoable ideas and settled upon reality, like we know, Frederick and I know, artists have to do. It isn't a matter of ideas. We have too many ideas. We'll go to our graves with piles of ideas, undone ideas. The question is, which ideas can you do? And we did one, yeah. but it took a team. So Andreas and I worked together. And uh, first time I got to work with him, and he's great, Andreas Trolf. Can we expect any more collaborations with you guys? I, I'm hoping oh. so. Our, uh I don't know, the, the people might question us now because last project we did totally fucked up the economy of Greece, right? We wanted to change the color of the Acropolis yeah. and we did halfways do it and then the economy just went to hell. It was a fun project, but it didn't work too well. And then of course, when we entered the real estate market, fucked up everything, <laughs> then we went into the stock market and now you know, all the stocks are going to hell too. Yeah. But as they say, It'll get better after it gets fucked up. So uh, perhaps they'll appreciate us more. And I think we'll do some exciting projects, I'm pretty sure. This is the shakeout period, like the Black Plague in the Middle Ages. 
Um, like whoever survives what's going on now, you know, because because as we know, uh, it's full on open season on human beings, from from corporations, from banks, from government, from uh, uh, healthcare providers, from the alien reptiles that that uh, pretend to be humans and dress in human clothing. Yes. We, it's full on season, it's open season. And we're on the run, humans are on the run. People that actually still think and even empathize with another human being, they're on the run. You guys have thoughts on 2012? Now that we're on a topic of this? 2004? 12, 2012. Well, Next year. Well, yeah, your uh, theories, your thoughts, your theories, since you're, we're going in that direction. You mean next year? Next year. I thought you meant what are our thoughts about what's going to happen last year. I like that. That would be pretty cool. That would be an interesting <laughs> Okay. Question. So what everybody knows, in, in Europe anyways, the euro is going to go away. But me and Jerry predicted that, so we have replaced it with a different currency. It's Krugerrands. <laughs> we're going back in time. We're going to time travel into the past when actually things were better. Because now the de-evolution is real and everybody knows it. They, uh, they yearn for the future that was promised in the past, if you see what I'm saying. In other words, this is going to sound pretentious, but the future can be found in the past. The future that was promised that never happened, that was derailed. It was destroyed by morons and idiots, political correctness, tyrants, uh, lack of will, disease, whatever it was. That intelligent, innovative, visionary future that we never got is going to be possible. God, that sounds so fucking optimistic. I'm sorry. What are you guys planning on doing next? We are writing musical and it's musical? yeah and it's not a joke hey can i uh, round of applause yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. let me take you to a special place let me take you to a special place now the musical starts off at a place i uh, come closer to come super close the musical starts at a place that looks kind of like this come closer i'm at a place like this i'm at a place called Bergen, Norway. I, uh, I'm bored. My life is not exciting. It's easy. It's perfect. Don't have financial worries. There's really nothing to, you know, keep me going. Then I discover stuff like the Ramones. Wow, exciting. But not too much. Then I check out Public Image Limited. Exciting. Not too much. Then I hear Devo. And I go, what the fuck is this? What is going on? And I'm like, wait a minute. This is the solution to all my problems and questions. We have to create a band. Now, this is my setting. I create a band called Data Rock with my three friends who are kind of weird. They think it's a good idea to wear red costumes, which happens to be tracksuits because that's the only costume they sell in my town and uh, we <laughs> decide to try to write some music we go all right we can't really we can't copy Devo too much because I'm sure they're gonna kick your ass and uh, we take elements from films like Revenge of the Nerds nobody's ever gonna discover who can ever discover that I stole entire dialogues from films like Revenge of the Nerds like when you know I'm not going to tell you. But um, the band Data Work decides to embark on a tour, follow me, um, in the US. So basically, the musical is about uh, a tour Data Work does from the uh, East Coast to the West Coast. Then, come on, on that tour. Uh, to everybody's great surprise, Data Work does meet Gerald. Data Rock does become a huge success. And by the time we come to Hollywood, California, we're already megastars. How do we handle that? What happened on the way?
Now that's the question that you will get answered when the film of Dead Rock the Musical is finished. That's what we're going to do. Dead Rock the Musical. So it's not going to be a play, it's going to be more of like a film? Oh, it's going to be a stage uh, play too. Um, it's... I don't want to tell you too much. Oh, come on. We're dying. Uh, well, uh, I don't want to reveal too much, but I'm just going to say one thing. Somewhere. And so on. Somehow. Someday. I like it. His, his musical is just goddamn aspirational. That's what I like about it. Wait, it's, it's You're at the to a lot two S's. <laughs> the two S's. Thank you. Yes, it really is. It, it makes me want to see it. I'm excited. Well, R. Kelly video right now. <laughs> R. Kelly. Oh, yeah. Keeping it real. <laughs> Keeping it real. We keep it real now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I love tra Trapped in the Closet. As, as I have, I have, I have all 23 episodes. But I have to say that his his little piece on YouTube that he made just for his fans in the studio. What, what is it called again? It's it's just fantastic. He's on the phone, of course, uh, where he's arguing with his girlfriend, of course, but. I ain't having none of you old man hating bitches. I wish you would burn my motherfucking clothes, motherfucker. Wow. It's great. I like the midget one the best. It was a midget, midget, oh, well, yeah, that, midget. Yeah. That's high production value. <laughs> Those shocker endings. Oh, yeah. There's the, the, there are, they are shocking, actually. They really are. I was shocked. The pregnant wife, the midget. Oh, the, oh, the cop that stops him? <laughs> that's been screwing his wife? Oh, that's right, that's right. And how about the package? Oh. Package turns out to be AIDS. I mean, this thing's epic. This is this is an opera. It's an opera. Oh, my God. It's no doubt about <laughs> And I like the part about, you know, well, he's hiding in the closet, and the preacher comes in, and because... Because he already explained to the woman that he can't jump out the window because she goes, oh, no, baby, you on the fifth floor, fifth floor, fifth floor. So he's like, he hides in the closet. And and then the Rufus, the preacher, comes in and he looks under the bed. He looks in the shower. He looks under the dresser. I so I pull out my Beretta, my Beretta, my Beretta, my Beretta. But then you click to the commentary track on the DVD. With the oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is new to me, man. I didn't know you were that deep in. Oh, well, you got to go deep when you're trapped in the closet. And he's there in his three-piece suit, smoking. A really nice Robusto, a Cuban Robusto, in the theater, a beautiful theater. And he explains, he says, you see right here, you know, I'm in the closet, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to hide from him. And, uh, and like, I don't even like a Beretta. That's not my favorite gun at all, but it rhyme with dresser. So I, <laughs> I use my Beretta because, you know, really, I like a Glock a lot more, you know. This, so this is some deep insight. Uh, about the way things work, you know. Oh my God. He schooled me. I got to tell you that thing. I'm crying. Yeah, and I was too. <laughs> it's it is tragic. You're killing me. Oh, don't oh, stop. Don't stop. I've never been this no, it's tragic. Oh. It's tragic. Mm. All right. No, I'm done. I'm. Oh man. <laughs> hey, what time it is? It's time to go eat. It's time to get ill. Hey, I, 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 it's very hard to top what you just did, but it's, uh, it's... Movie critics. Music video critics. Well, I, I'm going to send a message to you and you and you. 
Jerry, I just want to say one thing. Let's get lost, lost in each other's arms. Let's get lost, let them send down the charms. Let's celebrate that night we found each other. Ooh, let's get lost. Let's get the fuck out of here, man.